Hello. Musta yung break niyo? Uh, okay. I hope you were able to refresh yourself, selves. Then let's go to the next topic, which is a little bit. Sabi ko kanina madugo kunti ito. It's about our sermon, sermon preparation. Before I go further, let me remind you something which is very important in our uh, sermon presentation or preparation. This might not be included in the whole process of learning how to uh, deliver a sermon, a homily, but as a graduate of philosophy, I know this would be of help when we come to the delivery of our sermons. Uh, about reasoning, reasoning. Generally, there are two kinds of reasoning. Okay, there are two kinds of reasoning or reasoning methods. One is the deductive reasoning and the other is inductive reasoning. It's also familiar to us. <coughs> so deductive reasoning is to uh, familiarize ourselves with these things again. The deductive reasoning method reasons from a certain certain observation, a certain premises to a necessary conclusion. Most of the time, it is often described as a reasoning from the general from the general observation or reality to a specific to a specific kind of reasoning so deductive is from the general observation to a particular or specific point of view for example general argument or premise all men are mortal or general yun. all all men are mortal then Socrates is a man. Conclusion, therefore, Socrates is mortal. Easy, di ba? So, mas madali ang kanitong kind of reasoning kasi from the bigger circle towards a particular thing. So, from a bigger knowledge or observation where everybody knows to a part then you conclude coming up into something particular. Okay? So now, the inductive reasoning is the opposite of the deductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning reasons out in the opposite direction of the deductive method. It begins with this specific particular it begins with a specific observation and reasons to a generalization, general thing. Generalization about the observation. It is often described as reasoning from a particular, particular situation into a bigger one. That's why it's having a generalization. So that's... Uh, the two kinds of reasoning or method of reasoning, which I have said a while ago, it would it would be a big big help as we uh, get into the reality of preaching. Hindi mo nang actually you don't need to make tandaan mo agad agad literate at tandaan natin mo. Pero pag na familiarize ka sa dalawang bagay papasok at papasok at it just comes part of your ano na, experience 
having this knowledge at the back of your minds. Okay? So, para may example ako dito. For example, in our deductive reasoning, I have examined, I have examined 10,000 dogs. Every dog I have examined has fleas. Conclusion, particular. Therefore, all dogs have fleas. See? So, yan ang generalization coming from a small observation Tama ba? Begins with a specific observation, small, towards a generalization or general knowledge. I don't need to dwell on that more because hindi yan ang uh, essence ng ating uh, presentation. Okay? So, in our preparation for a sermon, it is basic for its preacher to familiarize with the scriptural text or lesson that is about to preach, to be preached, or to be expounded. Expounded. Learning the scriptures or the Bible text is something that cannot just be taken away from the work, the job, or the vocation of a preacher. Actually, the way people understand it is, is this way. A preacher, a preacher, and the scripture. These are two realities that cannot be <laughs> taken away. They cannot be, they cannot be cut off. It's always, whether you like it or not, they are always connected. That's why since this morning, I've been telling you again and again, paulit-ulit, na a preacher, a preacher is somebody who really has the heart, not just the knowledge, the heart of the scriptures. So, two realities cannot be taken away. Okay? So, in preparation for a sermon, or making a sermon outline, very basic ito. Number one, na dapat alam natin ito by heart. Letter A, study the text. It's biblical, biblical backgrounds, or this is what we call as exegesis. Okay? Every gospel text, every chapter of the Bible, has always a literally a background of what was happening during the time of Jesus when this particular gospel or text was written. So when you deliver your sermon, it is basic also for us preachers na may knowledge tayo about the things that we are going to talk about and share to the people in public. Kasi, obviously naman, if, 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 if a preacher failed, take note, if a preacher failed, failed to present the exegesis, the biblical background of this particular text, whom he is going to uh, whom he is going to to present the sermon kung wala siyang gospel background that's the end of you para na yung <clears throat> uh, para ka nang uh, you go into farming somebody who is into or who decides to go into farming yet he fails to know the basic things and tools on farming. So, dahil preacher ka, automatically, the way people understand you as a preacher, you have the knowledge of the scripture. Very basic po yan. Underline it. You have the basic knowledge of the scripture. Tawag natin dyan, exegesis. Most of the time, I use the term biblical background, but it's one and the same. 
Ang difference nila is the spelling. <laughs> More or less. Okay? A. Study the text, its biblical backgrounds or exegesis. B. Relate the text to its historical background. Hindi la yung story about what happened to Jesus when he said this text and so on and so forth. But it's also important to learn and to know what was the historical background why Jesus, for example, was angry at the temple. So you need to look back into the historical background of those texts, those experience, those story, because it will it would help the people understand its meaning. Why Jesus, a God, was getting angry. For example, kung hindi mo itil ang historical background, it would cause people to it would lead people to confusion. Why Jesus is angry? He is God, but he is angry. Well done on and so on and so forth. Example ng po yun. So there's a need not just to study the biblical background of the text, but also the biblical story or history of the text or experience that you are about to share to your audience, to your congregation. Let us see. After finding its theme or topic, make sure that you are able to relate it to the present situation of your people. Take note. Yung mga gospel text natin, biblical text natin, of course, it happened more than, <laughs> ilang taon na ba yun nangyari? More than 2,000 years ago, more or less. And then, if you fail to connect that past story or history into the real actual situation of your people today our people today may not find its meaning may not find its meaning ATM may, meaning of the text at the moment so very important yan. what was past is past tapos na yun but you have to make it alive again. Make it alive again, ang ibig sabihin, has to make that history or story of Jesus being connected into the actual real life experience of your people today. Failure to make that connection is also failure of your homily or sermon. Kasi, yan ang basic challenge of a preacher. Making that historical facts connected to reality today. Thirdly, that text or history of your story, dito mo ibabase ang messages o God's messages into the story of the people at the moment. Ibig sabihin, historical facts, kailangan hindi siya manatiling historical facts. Kailangan i-translate mo siya into the real life experience of people. From there, history, reality, dito mo i-dig out. Dito mo papalabas yung connection with this uh, guide question, for example, what is God's message to me right now through this particular text? Get you? Ulitin ko. History, reality. Pag na relate mo, na relate mo ang history at reality today, dito mo pipick up in, gagawin ang tinatawag na what is God's message for me today? underline today di lang yesterday dahil life is a continuous process of living and so on and so forth so ang lesson ni God to His people ay hindi na iiwan doon sa kanyang history because totoo nga through the Bible God continues His conversation with His people at their present moment. 
So as preachers, it's important for us for leading the people, laying the facts in history, connecting it into the challenges of the reality of the people's life today and making a sense of fresh message of Jesus for me, for me, for me. Pag nawala yung message ni God for me, what is God's message for me? Through the text just read, you are missing now the inspiration. God's inspiration to His people through His gospel text. Inipasize ko lang yan dahil pinaka-basic challenge yan ng mga preachers. Most of the time, there are preachers through observation parang fixated na stuck up sila, na paako sila doon lang sa history. And there are also preachers makapagal, na pagaling sana magsasalita, maglilay ng story, yet they are stuck up because they fail to they fail to bring the history into their own context of reality. So tatlong bagay yan. History, reality, God's message. Today. Today. Kung nakita nyo, analyze nyo, time in history, reality today, reality, situation, and the message of God today. Kumpletos rikados po iyon. Okay? Let's proceed. Let's go now to our sermon preparation. Pero hindi siya directly agad sa sermon preparation, but sermon outline. How to prepare a sermon outline. Take note, ha? Hindi ito nanggagaling sa iba mga well-known preachers all over the world. Ito coming from me. Sermon outline. Sabi nga ng iba, don't memorize your sermon. Ito yun. Sabi din ng iba, don't read your sermon. Okay? And then, ano pa yung iba? Study your sermon context and so on and so forth. Pero, sa akin, the secret is sermon outline. Yun lang. And that's the secret of delivering an effective, efficient, and productive sermon. So, I think, oh, sermon outline. No need for you to write down. No need for you to read your sermon in public. By the way, sa tradition ng Catholic Church, and I know, tradition ito ng uh, even Anglican churches, Orthodox churches, only a person in authority reads a sermon in public. While reading the sermon, he has to make sure that he sits down on his chair. Yan ang natutunan ko yan before. Dahil when an authority sits down and reads his sermon, ang ibig sabihin daw doon, that scene is a very important and official celebration with a person in authority. So, ibig sabihin, it's allowable to read. Eh, pero yun lang nga lang, yung tradisyon na natutunan ko. So, ito lang. The next thing na gagawin ko sa inyo is how to prepare a sermon outline. Pwede natin sabihin secret natin ito. I don't know kung ini-emphasize ito sa ibang mga learners on how to preach. Pero ako, itong secret ko at ito ang ini-emphasize ko. Paano ba talaga gumawa ng, o mag-prepare ng sermon outlines? Okay. Actually, simple lang yun. As 
I've said a while ago, I suggest you take notes. Okay? It's only a suggestion, but remember who is suggesting. <laughs> okay? That's the secret of a sermon outline. Simply lang. There are only three parts in a sermon outline. But either you talk on as a guest speaker, you talk in public. Palaging ganito ang outline. Of course, marami kang points, marami kang points, marami kang points, marami kang points. Pero make sure na itong mga points nyo ay na i-arrange nyo siya into these three categories in an outline. Simple yan. Number one, introduction. Number two, your body. Body. Hindi yung body ito, katawan. But body of the subject ma subject matters that you are going to talk to. And then you end up with a conclusion. Period. Tapos. That's a perfect sermon outline. Okay? Ganun lang yun. Pero, actually, hindi ganun kasimple yun. Kasimple yun. Dahil, napag-aralan natin kanina, paano natin i-arrange ang mga ideas natin? Paano ba natin <coughs> i-organize ang flow of thoughts and ideas? So, balikan natin yun. So, ganito na yun. Anong meron sa introduction? Make sure that when you go into an introduction, you have to make sure, sure, na you make a big statement. Reason is, in order for you to catch the attention of your audience. Yun, yun. Uh, okay. In the introduction, you can talk about the proper Sunday. What is the proper Sunday of this Sunday? Yung ating liturgical, uh, liturgical, tawag ito? Liturgical arrangements of the liturgy. The lessons, the readings of the day, you can get something from there. Then, the, the gospel text of the day. It is from there that you may get your theme or your topic. For example, the gospel today is... Ah, by the way, ang hindi ko makalimutan pala, kasi some other people ask, saan ba natin mahanap ang mga scriptural text na pwede natin gamitin sa ating homily? Ako lang sa aking... Uh, na pagdaanan at uh, narinig ko dito kay Bishop Rex na when it comes to the Sunday homily or sermons it is advisable that we get our sermon text sermon text coming from the readings on that Sunday or upcoming Sunday you can talk about the first reading, connect it to the second reading, but buhos mo na agad yung message mo sa gospel. So in short, it is advisable na you get your sermon context from the upcoming Sunday. Kasi, pati yung sa mga ginagamit natin mga gospel text or scriptural text for our Bible study, Bible sharing sessions, doon pa rin natin kinukuha yun dahil it is the upcoming readings na uh, nakatuon ang lahat doon. Okay? And then, letter D, the theme of that Sunday worship. Or you can make a statement. Yung kanilang sinasabi ko, minansun ko, may enumeration ako kaninang coming from the experiences or observations coming from your church, anong na-observe mo, anong na-rig mo, pwede mo yung gagamitin. Pwede mo ilagay ito sa introduction. Okay, the body. Body is the main topic. By the way, you can all you can always select a one body, one topic only. Talk about it. Tapos. Right? Kung marami ka pang ideas, you divide your body into one, two, three. And every, for example, item one, 
you talk about something, and then pwede mong ilalagay doon, below that item, pwede mong ilagay A, B, C. Then, another topic, number 2, A, B, C, and then another topic, number 3, A, B, C. That's all. So, kung marami kang ideas, yun ang pag-arrange mo. Body, 1, 2, 3. And then, kung may item kang ibang, below, so 1, A, B, C, A, B, C, 2, A, B, C, A, B, C, 3, A, B, C. That's the whole point in uh, in constructing a body in your uh, outline. And then, after that, kung marami ka pang sabihin, it's all up to you. But minimize it. Slow, slow, loud, and clear. At the same time, kaya klaro, clear yung video outline. Yung flow ng ideas mo. Okay? So, thirdly, simple na. Make a conclusion. When you make a conclusion, pwede mong summarize from the introduction. Pwede mong summarize anong meron sa body messages mo. And make, lastly, pwede mong gawin dun. Conclusion mo. Or, pwede mong balikan ng gospel message. Or gospel text for that Sunday. Balikan mo. Gamitin mo yon as a conclusion. But my point is that, make it that way. Introduction, points by points, body, item 1, 2, 3, then conclusion. You can make other two conclusions or three conclusions, but I would advise it, make only one conclusion and make a big bang in your conclusion. That's it. That's how to prepare a sermon outline. You may have learned, read some other people trying to enumerate some things on how to prepare sermons, but mine is sort of, uh, ano ito, short, shorten, shorten methods on how to prepare a sermon outline. Wala ka namang ibang gagawin doon eh. Ang most important thing is you have the three elements. Introduction, body, conclusion. Period. Okay? Ang ending, yung conclusion, dito, papasok yung challenge. Challenge the audience to a practical action. Yun bang, ano yung bang, sa kailang pag-iisip, ano kayang plan of action ang pwede kong i-apply sa sarili kong buhay ngayon? Yun, itong mga bagay na ito, ito yung pwede natin gagawin challenges. At doon natin doon ilalagay sa last part, conclusion. Challenge the audience to a practical action or application to real life experience. Relate it to the present by answering, relate it to the present by answering, yung sabi ko kanina, what is God's message for us today? Period. Then, papaalam ka. Tapos ang homily mo. Okay? So, these are the simplest method on sermon preparation. Okay. Next is summary natin. Sa kanina, pinag-usapan natin ang ano ba yung kanina pinag-usapan natin? Uh, sermon preparation. Yung una kanina, we talk about it might be of help. The two kinds of reasoning methods, inductive, deductive, and then I present to you after that yung mga dapat natin gagawin in order for us to contextualize a sermon. So, sabi ko, I presented to you yung uh, study, study, familiarize yourself with the text of that Sunday reading, ano ba yun? And then make sure that you're able to relay to your audience not just the history, the background, but also <coughs> the historical background of that particular text na ginagamit mo sa yung homily. And then make sure to make your sermon effective, make sure that from history you're able to articulate, translate it into the present actual real situation of your audience and with that make sure to come up with what is god's message for us today 
coming from the text just read. Dito ay ibase yung conclusion, basta make sure that you are making a big bang when you have your conclusion in every uh, in every sermon that you deliver. Okay? So, lastly, ito, conclusion. Plan of action on what to do according to the message in the gospel. B, finish your sermon with a big bang. Ibang sabi natin, yun bang tagus sa puso. Okay? So, I think I was able to present to you the context on sermon preparation. And then I sort of emphasize our sermon outline. Okay. Uh, our next activity is we have a scheduled open forum. And before I entrust this uh, leading the open forum to Shara, meron akong konting ano ba? Information or lambing. Lambing sa inyo. Ang lambing ko sa inyo, ganito. Ang schedule is after the open forum 11 o'clock to 12 before lunch ang schedule is breakout rooms ay doon na kung papayag si attorney Floyd nito baka papagalitan ako but ito ay suggestion lang but remember who is suggesting <laughs> okay sige after the open forum Wala tayong breakouts o breakout rooms <coughs> dahil I want you or I suggest I suggest that each one of you make or prepare your own sermon outline. Take note. Hindi sermon. Sermon. Ang sermon kasi is a byproduct of your outline. So, hindi yung sermon na sus ipasusulat ko sa inyo, kundi make your own sermon outline. Okay? I think it's good for one hour. Instead na meron tayong uh, breakout rooms, observe silence, and so on and so forth. So, you go through to your you go through your own comfortable places, relax, take your Bible with you. Okay. In silence, I want you to prepare a sermon outline on the Gospel for tomorrow, Sunday. The Gospel for tomorrow, na ihandaan, na ihandaan nyo ang sermon outline nyo is coming from St. Matthew. Take note. Matthew chapter 14 verses 13 to 21. Ulit. Matthew 14 verses 13 to 21. Instruction on what to do with the sermon outline will be announced before we start session 14. Secret Basta make sure that you have the sermon outline with you. So, itong one hour na ibibigay sa inyo, huwag niyong sayangin yan. Huwag niyong sayangin. Bring your own Bible. Gusto ko sana isang version ng Bible, pero kanya-kanya tayong Bible eh. Kami sa EDCP, ang pina, officially ang pinapagamit namin uh, Bible, Bible version yung Pinoy version ng bagong Bible ngayon. So, yan ang pinadistribute sa buong diocese. Mas maganda eh. Kasi, ano siya, taglis. At saka down to, <laughs> ano ang term nilang uh, description lang Millennial. Millennials daw ang pagka-translate. Maganda. Okay. 
So, a rem reminder, we will start our session 14 at 2 p.m. sharp. 2 p.m. sharp. Be sure that you're able to have your break, have, take a rest, and get ready for the 2 o'clock 2 o'clock uh, session natin. So, relax lang, relax lang, relax. So, the following topics are the topics of our next session. Uh, the last session with me, session 14, will be the following topics. Types, types of sermons, sermon or sermons, how to deliver a sermon. Meron ko mga secret doon. How to deliver a sermon, guidelines for preparing yourself preparing yourself before you go into the pulpit and preach your sermon how to develop our personal presentation capabilities so that will be our last topic last session session 14 okay that's why make sure you have your own sermon outline because the rest the presentation nagdedepende yan sa inyong ihahandang sermon outline. Okay, so now I would like to turn you over to uh, Shara for the open forum. Thank you.